Hi, this is Edna Watka with Publishing Perspectives, and we've got three minutes with Oren Tyker, the CEO of the American Booksellers Association. You've just had your day of education here at Book Expo America, and I'm curious what, uh, what kind of topics of discussion were, uh, were prioritized today, and what do you see the challenges for independent bookselling going forward in this age of digitization? Well, we, we had uh, lots of discussions about lots of things today. Clearly, most importantly, is how do stores figure out how to survive in this incredibly, incredibly fast-changing world. You know, if you think about all the changes that have happened uh, within the past 12 months, let alone in the past three years, uh, it's really kind of staggering. The unprecedented rate of change that we're dealing with in the book business uh, it, 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 you know, it makes us lose our lose our breath. And bookstores uh, are trying to figure out, uh, and many are succeeding in figuring out how to be part of this incredibly changing environment. We happen to really believe that there is a, an opportunity for bricks and mortar independent stores not just to survive but to thrive in this environment. The contraction of some of the larger big box stores with the decrease in the square footage devoted to books by some of the mass merchandisers. Uh, people still want a place that they can go and discover books and that's what we do. Not only can they come to our stores and discover books, uh, they can go to those stores where you've got community of people who are knowledgeable and passionate and can recommend and put the right book in the customer's hand. So, you know, there's a lot of challenge, there's a lot of change, but uh, we, we don't share the doom and gloom uh, about this business. We think that there are readers out there, they may want to read books in different formats from time to time. What we've got to do is be able to respond to that customer and put the book in their hand regardless of what format they want to add that shopping experience and to add the ability to discover new authors and new titles. So essentially this big issue about book discovery that the digital marketplace seems concerned about is one that you feel book selling already answers we've by been, its very we've, we've been a place where people have been discovering books forever. Uh, and uh, that's why customers come to our stores mm -hmm. and there is nothing that will be browsing in a physical location store. Now that doesn't mean that we don't have to be smart about operating state-of-the-art websites and being able to offer uh, digital books to our customers too, because book readers are going to want to are going to do both. Uh, and we know the world is changing, but we've got to be able to participate in that changing world and be able to ensure that our customers don't go somewhere else because we can't respond to their needs. We're going to continue to respond to their ability to browse. We're also going to serve their digital needs at the same time. Now, with, via the IndieBound program, provided a bookseller it participates in the in the the website's uh, in the hosting, yeah. the e-commerce section, they can sell digital books. Absolutely. What have, what have, percentage do you have doing that? We have, we have uh, well, we, we have now. Uh, we're, we'll announce at the show that we now have over 300 stores participating uh, in our in our e-commerce program, which is an increase uh, of almost a third from a year ago. And I don't think there's any doubt that part of that is a function of our ability to sell uh, digital content. Uh, so uh, stores are doing it. You know, we're not selling an avalanche of digital books yet, but this is a pro program that launched only in the, uh, last December. Uh, we're working on it, you know, in the the, the agency model of publishers to set prices uh, for the cost of that content, um, you know, is enormously important because, in fact, people can buy books, digital books, at our member stores at exactly the same price they can buy them from someone else. So we can add the value to that transaction about our knowledge and passion about books uh, and, in fact, sell it to the consumer at the same price. A lot of the news at the show has been uh, Barnes & Noble has launched a new reader, Kobo put out a new reader that Borders has been pushing. Uh, is there any plans afoot for ABA to, to look at partnering with a reader or some kind of branding? Uh, we're, we're, we're looking at every option, uh, and certainly the development of a reader is, is one of those pieces. It, you know, it, it, is, it is a fact that uh, e-reading has been more about the device than a lot of people projected a year or so ago. Yeah. So we're looking at a variety of options, and and and, and our, our, our what we've got to do is help empower our members, make it easy for their customers to buy digital books from them, 
perhaps having a device is one way, re-looking at the Apple world. I think what we've got to do is make it easier for our members. And um, the membership has grown. How much of that, uh, can you tell me what the current numbers are and how much of that is attributable to the absorption of the American Children's uh, well, Book Association? Well, our members have grown. We will announce at our town meeting, annual meeting tomorrow, that we have uh, uh, about 110 more member stores uh, today than we did a year ago at, the, at, at this convention, uh, which marks the second year in a row that our numbers have gone up after a long period of time uh, in which they've gone down. In fact, the uh, merger with ABC was really insignificant in terms of growing that number because virtually all the ABC stores were also already members of ABA. But we've been aggressive about reaching out to stores that for one reason or another had not been members of ABA to get them to join. And the good news is that there are uh, close to 35 new stores that have opened this past year and increasingly in this market because of the website, because of the educational program we ran today that we do at our Winter Institute. I think stores see enough value in membership, so uh, people are joining. And we're delighted that uh, there are more of us. We had yesterday at our prospective bookseller school um, close to 40 students. Uh, well, that gives us reason to think there's a future there, too. And finally, um, you announced a, a potential partnership in the UK to take the IndieBound program overseas. How's that progressing? It's progressing great. The, our friends at the BA have um, adopted um, IndieBound. They are, as I, I've said to them, they've, they've translated it into English and they've uh, made it reflect the sensibilities of their market. We've, been, we, we're, we've entered into a similar arrangement with our colleagues in Australia and in New Zealand. And the, the, you know, the IndieBound message of supporting locally owned businesses really resonates everywhere. There's a kind of little oxymoron here that localism has a global uh, impact, but it absolutely does. It's different in each country. The way in which the messages are used are different in each country, uh, but we couldn't be more delighted that uh, uh, more and more booksellers and in fact more and more other independent business people around the world are highlighting the fact that they're locally owned independent businesses. Fantastic. Um, thank you, Oren. Have a you great are. show.